well, here we are, late winter, almost spring, except uh, tell the weather that. <laughs> it's quite chilly this evening, and uh, of course it's dark outside. I've got my favorite pink uh, bathrobe on that I wear when I feel like I need a little extra cuddle here, and I have a cup of my favorite um, herbal tea with honey in it, so I feel pretty well set. I had a good day. It was my day off from work. I've started working again, and uh, went ahead and worked at the local food bank, which was great. It was very quiet. It was, uh, you know, everyone went through really with a good flow and it, it was just a, a great experience, not quite as stressful as some of the other ones have been over time. I don't know why that is, but it, it was fine. Whatever happens, it's always fine, but it was kind of nice to have a, a day that was relatively uh, orderly and relaxing. So what I wanted to talk about this evening was uh, needlework and sewing and those sort of things, because they are dear to my heart, both uh, in general and especially since I've moved up here. I was very lucky to get a lot of um, training in needlework when I was very young. When I was really like the first and second grade, I had a babysitter, a much older lady who taught me how to knit. I still have the original knitting needle she gave me and uh, I knit to this day and since that time I also taught myself how to crochet and I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of making things and, and even selling items. I've sold hats mainly and I've made things for other people, afghans, all sorts of stuff. And uh, I also was um, lucky enough to have a mother who sewed. My mom sewed all our clothes and uh, knew how to sew. and. I learned from her how to read patterns and do patterns and, and I made some of my own clothes too. So it was fortunate that I had this early exposure. My love of sewing also led me into a multi-decade decade love of um, quilting. And over the years I've made, oh gosh, I can't even tell you how many quilts I've made. I've made them for myself, family members. Uh, for friends, baby quilts. Um, I've repaired old quilts. I've quilted for other people. I even wrote about quilts in different quilting magazines when the heyday of quilting was uh, going on. And that's always been an enjoyable hobby and an enjoyable thing that I, I was able to do as a result of knowing how to sew. Lately, I've been doing a lot of fixing and mending. Um, for example, a friend of mine gave me an old bath towel that he had ripped into squares and he asked me to make the squares or whatever into hand towels for him, so no problem. I turned over the edges and zigzagged them and now that old bath towel has new life as, a, as a, several hand towels that he can use in his bathroom. I also have done um, mending for people. I have clients, I do home health care and some of my clients have needed adaptations made to their clothing so that they can uh, still wear them. So I've been able to do that and sometimes it's been a little bit of uncharted water for me, but it's all good. I, every time you do something like this, you learn something else and it's helped my clients. Um, I've done a lot of mending on them. Um, I have another friend who does landscaping and uh, kind of handyman work and he's blown out all his knees on about five or six of his work pants. So was able to watch a you know, couple of YouTube videos. I've never done that before, and you know, that sort of mending, and was able to just whiz through all those, um, those pants. So now he has uh, pants that are perfectly fine for work, and he doesn't have to throw those out and buy new ones. I don't usually charge. If somebody wants to pay me or take me out for coffee or something, I do, but I really enjoy the whole concept of uh, taking things and, and making new things out of them and uh, sort of keeping stuff out of the waste stream and saving somebody some money. This is not the wealthiest area here. And if I can save somebody uh, having to buy five or six new pairs of jeans, then I'm more than happy to do it. <laughs> having some construction done in my house right now. So the guy in charge of the construction across the road saw my sewing machines and now I'm, I guess I'll be fixing some of his pants too. <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> I have a strange little phenomenon in my house where every once in a while I find something in my driveway which is useful. I have found um, two pieces of cloth, both drapery cloth, different types, and a folder with all of these um, little folders within it for, for organizing paperwork. And I think I know who was doing that, but I can't tell you for sure. It's just 
useful items every once in a while are tossed from a car into my driveway. So I pick them up and I take them. One of those items, as I said, was uh, some drapery fabric. It was a drape. Um, it was this fabric, as a matter of fact, it's very old school, um, 1960s grandma. But, you know, I'm a grandma, <laughs> so it's okay. So one day I found that in my driveway, so I pulled it in to the house. I cut off the backing, washed the whole thing, and uh, now I've cut it up and I'm gonna be making curtains for my back room. The back room is a really wonderful room. It has lots and lots of windows looking out all over the woods, but two of the windows are kind of at ground level. My house is built on a slope, so the back of the house is higher than the front. The front of the house is at ground level and the back of the house is higher. So the orientation of these two particular windows, you can sort of see into that room from the road a little bit if you're walking down the road, or you can see if you're coming down through the, um, through my yard you can see in there and and um, it doesn't bother me tremendously but at night I just don't care to um, have the light on and, and, and to be visible in there so these um, curtain pieces have just been a blessing I don't need anything fancy in there it's the room where my freezer is where the stove is and all sorts of stuff and one day it's going to be a very beautiful room but right now it's just a utilitarian room so I just need a utilitarian uh, um, curtains and there's something kind of fun even though these really ugly ugly fabric it's good thick fabric it will be good for insulating a little bit and um, there's something kind of fun about the fact that they just appeared in my driveway so I've cut those up I'm sewing them there's a little bit of mending and um, well, pretty soon probably in the next couple days I'll be able to hang them and then have some privacy in that back room I like to watch a lot of homesteading channels and people living out in rural areas because I'm kind of half homesteading and I live in a rural area and I'm partially off grid so I guess there's a little bit of an affinity but I do see sometimes in the comments people saying you know they could never do it or they can't do it they don't have 10 acres they don't have 100 acres they, they live in the city and I'm just here to tell you that you can make a beautiful life for yourself no matter where you are you don't need 100 acres to know how to take care of yourself and um if you can take some jeans and, and rework them, if you can um, take a piece of fabric and make some curtains for your, you know, your windows or recycle some towels or help somebody out, then you're already way ahead of the game. Because <laughs> homesteading is about providing for your own needs and, and life should be about providing for your own needs. And it's very satisfying to be able to create something that, that solves a problem for yourself or somebody else. I have found that one of the most satisfying um, elements of being able to sew and do all this is that it really keeps me company. Um, it's very quiet up here. You can't just sort of step out and go to a friend's house or go out for coffee or I don't know. <laughs> it's always a big drama, especially in the winter, to go anywhere. The weather, the road's washed out. It's really dark. It's cold. You don't want to do it. The next entertainment is several towns away. Um, it's just nice to have something to do and something that keeps you company and that's something that has a you know you have a product at the end and I'm just so grateful for uh, the skills I learned and you can learn them at any age I just happened to learn them when I was young sometimes I sew sometimes I knit but I always have something in my hands and uh, it's just the most peaceful feeling so that's how sewing and needlework uh, fit into my life right now um, as you can see I have my Dining area has been turned over to a sewing, sewing corner. I'm going to try to consolidate that a little bit because I, I would like to eat at the table from time to time. But it's just a, a nice thing, especially in the winter, in these winter evenings, to have these projects to do and to have the skills to do them. Anyway, I hope you're warm and cozy and life is treating you well. Thank you so much for watching.